whole fucking life trying to get a motorcycle. My whole fucking life, all I wanted was a motorcycle. And first, I couldn't afford the motorcycle. Then when I could afford the motorcycle, then I had kids. And you can't just get a motorcycle as your primary means of transportation if you got kids. You don't know what to tell them in the driveway. You just, I ain't got no room. <laughs> and I finally was able to fucking get the motorcycle. I was happy like a kid at motherfucking Christmas. You don't understand, I have never been this goddamn happy. I had the motherfucking motorcycle and it was small and black and fast just like me. And I had got the black Harley Davidson boots and the leather one piece that zip up here and got the knee pads and shit already in it. I look like a black toddler superhero. Like you should call me to solve small crimes and shit. But I felt good than a motherfucker cause I'm not that big in regular life, but um, on a motorcycle, nigga, I'm the perfect size. If you look in the rear view, you don't even see me coming, nigga. It just look like a bike is coming by itself, nigga. <laughs> And I was so motherfucking proud to have that motherfucker and I thought everybody was gonna be excited for me cause I was happy and everybody talked shit. Everybody, everybody who saw me standing by the goddamn bike talk shit about, nigga, what the fuck is you doing with a bike? Nigga, you gonna kill yourself. And then my bodyguard who ride a Harley every goddamn day, I'm thinking this nigga gonna have my back. This the first nigga talking shit, talking about, nigga, if you ride, nigga, you gonna fall. <laughs> nigga, what? Nigga, if you ride, nigga, you gonna fall. Nigga, why are you saying that like that's in the Bible or something? That's not a scripture, nigga. You can't just be quoting that to people. Nigga, if you ride, nigga, you gonna fall. So he done said this shit so much, it done spooked me. So I had to take the bike off to myself for a couple days and try to practice and shit, cause I'm not built like regular motherfuckers. Like most motorcycle niggas, if you see them at the light, they hold they whole bike up just on they tippy toes and shit. I'm not built like that. I got to ease way up on the handlebars, put my legs out firmly and shit, or else I'd be done lost control of the bike and rolled into the intersection or some shit. Just... So I had to go off to my motherfucking self and try to get my shit in fucking order. So I done worked on it for like three or four days and finally I feel comfortable enough to debut and showcase me and my motherfucking fast ass black motherfucking bike. So we are in Tampa and it's the perfect situation. It's a curvy road that go like this and then it break into a straight shot for a mile. Now I'm not gonna fuck with the curvy part but I am in the cusp of the curb and the straightaway and all I'm waiting for is the bus to come cause it's got glass windows and I want them to come around and then catch me in all my motherfucking glory down the goddamn street and I'm not telling my bodyguard because I want him to be the first motherfucker with the dusty mouth for talking shit about me in the first goddamn place so this is how it was in my head now you know what I was thinking in my head now it had been raining for a couple days before this day don't worry, that don't have nothing to do with the story. I'm just trying to make sure you know the details. But since it had been raining, I decided I'm gonna be extra careful. So I moved my bike to the middle of the street, right on the yellow line. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's a straight shot. And I wanna make sure if somebody come from this way or that way, I can fucking maneuver. Now you can probably hear some niggas grumbling and laughing in the back. Them is real motorcycle riders who is telling their friends, you should never ever be on the yellow line because that's the slipperiest place on the goddamn street. But none of them smart ass niggas was there at the goddamn time. So I'm just gonna tell the story like the fuck it happened. So. Here I am on the yellow line. The bus is coming through the curves. Now you know when you get excited how everything slow down and go into slow motion and shit. That's where the fuck I was. I saw the bus, I went into slow motion. And I hit that motherfucker one time. Now let me pause the story right here. Just to say sometimes shit does not work out the way you got damn planned it. One second, I'm waiting on my moment of glory. Shoo! I hit it one time, yee! I don't know what happened the next second. <laughs> but the second after that, I am in the middle of the goddamn street. 
with my bike on top of me. Now, not only am I in the middle of the goddamn street, trapped under my own goddamn bike, the bus has now pulled up right the fuck here. So now everybody in my staff is looking at me trapped under my own goddamn bike. And my bodyguard, who could have easily picked this motherfucker up off of me, is too busy getting his seven goddamn chuckles under his goddamn helmet and shit. And not only am I caught under my own fucking bike, my left hand is caught up under the handlebars. So not only am I trapped under my own bike in the middle of the street, I am slowly spinning for no goddamn reason at all. Just ee I get up, all this side is all crispity, crackly, crunchy, cool. I can't even get no motherfucking sympathy from no goddamn body, cause it ain't like I got in a motorcycle accident. All the fuck that happened is my bike drug me five feet up the goddamn highway and then slowly spun me rotisserie style in front of my goddamn friends. I had to do what any real motherfucker would do in that situation. Just... <laughs> I got back on that motherfucker and made them follow me for 500 miles while I did two and a half miles an hour crying, nigga. Y'all been all that. I've been Cat Williams. Thank you so much, DC. I appreciate it. <laughs>